I live in New York at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but I grew up in Delhi. Um, my, I grew up in a sort of slightly unusual household for, for Indian circumstances or maybe any circumstances. My mother is German, um, and I went to German school there, and um, my father is Indian, and I, I lived in Delhi until I was 18 and then moved away for, for university. Yes, absolutely. Um, I always knew I wanted to be a writer, I guess even before I started writing. Um, probably even before I knew that there was such a thing as a writer of stories um, in the eyes of other people. Um, I mean, and one, one of the things is that my, both of my parents are writers. Um, not fiction, they, they're both scholars of Indian art. But on what? On Indian art. Um, so I grew up very much with the written word around me and sort of respect for the written word, but also sort of a certain skepticism of it or a certain playfulness with it, which I think carried over in, into my fiction writing. But they were very supportive throughout. Um, I think, you know, for me it was always clear that that was the only thing I really wanted to do, that I had to do. Um, and given their own backgrounds, they both had to sort of, I guess, in their own ways, fight certain odds to, to get to where they were, um, that they knew that this was something that they could let me do. Really. Definitely my parents, um, I think because they, they themselves, um, writing is such an important part of their own work um, that as soon as I knew that this is what I wanted to do, it was clear that they would, they would be very supportive and I think one of the things that, was, that I admire most of them that, that was most helpful to me as a writer myself when I was younger, when I was still trying to figure out what it even meant to be a writer, um, was this complete openness um, of your mind to, to, to your experiences and to the world around you um, in the sense that they, they never really had any very you know any strong affiliations of any particular kind that they pressed upon me whether that's you know religious or ideological or personal or linguistic even and um, and so I was always able to to see things from different perspectives because they very, they very much you know mm, helped me understand these different perspectives, but it was, it was always clear that, that there was, um, you, you could be open to, to, to respect these different perspectives, and I think that allowed me, again, to, to develop sort of a sense of humor, you know, towards these things, and that's very, an important part of my own writing, and um, you kind of realize, I think what I learned from them was that you realize that there's nothing sacred as such other than what you do with your life, and that gives you a certain flexibility and openness, I think. Um, I think maybe that's a question that would be hard for, for me to answer myself, that maybe might be up to the readers more than, than to myself. All, all I know is that I, I, I have to write, I mean that's the only thing I, I can do and um, I think, you know, I, I know that there's a very strong sense of anxiety when I don't write and there's a very strong sense of, um, of urgency and of, of relief when I do write, so I think just from that perspective it, it's more of a personal um, personal desire, and then of course, um, everything else is up to the reader. I would say. I don't write for a particular audience, but my I mean, most of my writing is set and rooted in in India, more specifically in Delhi. Um, I would say all of my writing is set in the city, be that Delhi most of the time, also New York, um, and so I, I, in in some sense, I, I guess that my reader is the, the person I'm thinking of, and most of my characters are the people of those cities, the cities that I love, the cities that I lived in, that have inspired me. I would say it's more intuitive than, than idea-driven. Um, I always felt, since, since I always have, I grew up with several languages, and since I always have several languages active in my head, not just that I know them, but I actually use them, um, on a daily basis, I think I, I always thought of myself as a sort of slightly slower thinker. <laughs> I think I take longer than most people to process ideas and, and arguments, and um, and I have a much and I realize that I have a much more intuitive kind of visual approach to writing, and it's a separate step then for me to formulate that into words um, or language. And I think um, because of that, I I, I always thought of myself as a, as a more intuitive person rather than idea based. I mean, I, I would say that I, I definitely don't start out with an idea in terms of, you know, I, I want to write about the effects of 
globalization in Delhi, and, and then think, think of a story, it's rather the other way around, that I would, um, I, often it's a character actually, or a character trait, and then everything else kind of grows around that, it's the people that I, I think of, um, the people first, the people I want to write about, and everything else kind of grows organically around that. Um, I think if anything that would be maybe the most accurate way of, of describing how I work. They all sort of, I'm sure, they're, they're all in some ways rooted in my own experience. Um, though I don't, I wouldn't say I, I'm an autobiographical writer, I don't think so, I don't, I think I'm much more inspired by the lives of other people and um, I, I work through observation rather than interpretation. I take, I'm an obsessive note taker so I have a lot of notes to, to sort of build on and um, I think that's kind of how my writing actually started. I, I, that's how I began when I was very young, to just take notes. And then I didn't start writing systematically, you know, at least fiction, until I was in my early 20s, I'd say. So um, there are definitely people who, in some form or another, have touched my life, whether that's you know, family heritage or family mythology or people I've met or people I've known or even just fleeting, um, fleeting encounters. Um, and it kind of grows from there. Um, there were many, and, and I think because of because of my cultural background, I think the, the influences are somewhat disparate, I guess, because I grew up with German literature, and then also, um, of course, Indian literature, British literature, then when I came here, contemporary American literature. Um, so some of the people, you know, some of the books that were important when, when I was growing up, um, when I was younger at the, at the German school, um, we read, you know, a lot of 19th and turn of the century German literature, people like Robert Weiser, which I was very deeply impressed with, and then books like Midnight's Children, of course, you read that when you're a young child, I mean, a child and then you're a growing child. Um, one of the writers that I still admire, that I draw great inspiration from, is V.S. Naipaul. Um, Who was the German again, would you say his name? Robert Walser. Mm -hmm. It's um, W-A-L-S-E-R. He's been translated recently in the U.S., <laughs> which was <laughs> I was happy to see. But um, writers such as him and um, V.S. Naipaul is one of the right reader, the, one of the writers I I admire greatly, just sort of in terms of his precision. Um, and then writers in the American context, context such as Richard Yates and Richard Price. Um, also, Richard Price, especially, who writes about cities in a way that I find very inspiring. I picture myself living um, between several cities. I mean, Delhi will always be home, um, so I'm looking forward to, to you know, I, I spend part of the year there, and, and I'm looking forward to spending a little more time there. Um, I think I'll always spend part of the year in New York, hopefully, or at least touch base there. And um, I'm also looking forward to being in Berlin more, which is where I did my undergraduate and where um, I have family as well. Um, so I think between these three places, the year will fly by, I'm sure. But ideally, I, I would like to write full time and, um, and be able to spend time in the cities and among the people of these cities that I write about. Well, I can, I can only repeat what was said to me when I was that age, and which I think was very important to hear from you, is persistence is the, <laughs> the trick. I mean, it's really, it's, I think, one of the hardest things um, in the world. It, it, writing doesn't come easily to me. I, I, I wouldn't, if you, unless you really, really feel like you have to be a writer, I wouldn't, I would, my advice would actually be to someone not to write and to find something, I think, something else. I think you can have a much... Really? Um, gentler <laughs> life if you're not if you're not a writer unless you really have to be. So I think um, my advice would, however, if you do want to be a writer and you know you have to be a writer, then I think I would say um, just you know persist and, and be generous with yourself, be generous with your time. I mean, you just have to give yourself time to write this. Mm, I admire people who do it sort of who work full time jobs and or, or have little children or you know small children and. Um, write in between in those gaps, just like my parents often did as well, and I, I think um, it, one, of the, one of the most <laughs> difficult things about writing is to actually give yourself that time and space and patience.